I have a really fun topic, and I think it's interesting that uh, I see one of the big issues about electric vehicle adoption in the United States is a cultural issue. Uh, I think the last time I talked about this, I had about a thousand people in the audience, and that was in Tianjin. And when I went to EVS, I saw, I think the visitors, somebody here probably knows, there's something like 80,000 visitors a day to, to EVS in Shenzhen. And then we come to the United States. You guys are a very high quality audience, but you're relatively small. And that actually might be a description of the entire electric vehicle industry in the United States. It's a pretty smart group of people, but culturally small, or a small culture. Well, so I'm going to talk about the uh, extremely fast growing and, and very nice uh, industry of electric power two wheelers. And I have a co presenter, Chris Nardi. Chris Nardi is uh, here on behalf of the Light Electric Fuel Association and uh, EVO, which is an infrastructure company. And he thought he was going to come to this show and maybe he was going to tell people how to fix electric bikes. And a minute ago I said to him, I said, Chris, why don't you show these guys what you thought you were going to talk about and then listen to their ideas? Because we have a very high level audience here. Okay, so what's going on in the electric vehicle business from our seat? A lot. Um, 40,000 people ride electric bicycles through this intersection. And by the way, there's a whole bunch of intersections in China. A whole bunch of intersections just in this city. And I used to look out my window and look at that and say, that is the electric bike river. It starts at about 7.30 in the morning and it quits at about 9.30 at night. The, um, why does they compare to like standard bikes, or regular bikes? Well, you know, that. thank you for asking that question. Let's look at this picture. Let's find the manual cyclist. One. Uh, anybody see another one? Uh, is there one way over here, the tall one? That might be a manual cyclist. Okay, uh, I hope that answers your question. 50% of the sales of bicycles in China today are electric bikes. But it's something like 80% of the dollars or the 80% of the Redmond B that's handled are electric. Okay, why would you listen to me? I got three jobs. I'm chairman of the Light Electric Vehicle Association, which means I'm a trade industry notable. I preside over the youngest trade association in the world, I think. We have about 200 members uh, coming from 29 countries. Most of our members are focused on the industry of the light electric vehicles. I'm the managing director of a consulting company that's been promoting or, or studying and helping people in, in electric powered two-wheelers since 1996. Um, there's a joke about my business which says there's really good news and really bad news. The good news is that Benjamin's made a whole bunch of money in the electric two-wheeler business. Bad news is the only one in America that's done that. Uh, I am the co-author of Electric Bikes Worldwide Reports, which is an every other year snapshot of our industry that's been uh, authored and edited and owned by Dr. Frank Jamerson. I think a lot of you know Dr. Jamerson. Uh, I'm his legs and eyes and ears to go out there in the world and bring back the information. And he would like for you all to know that the latest edition is mm -hmm. in the process of being published right about now. Yeah, I just got an email announcement from him. Uh, the Light Electric Vehicle Association is something that some of you may be interested in getting involved in. Uh, we are about to publish, I hope we're going to publish the Taipei Cycle, an industry standard for how you describe an electric two-wheeler. We, um, we have networking events. If somebody wants to become an insider in the electric, in light electric industry, I usually tell them, come to six of our dinners and you'll be an insider. So what is a light electric vehicle? It's a phrase that I stole from Lee Iacocca. Uh, we regard it in our industry as being less than 100 kilograms, although we are willing to accept uh, the occasional heavier vehicle. Two or three wheels, an electric motor, usually a battery. Electric bike, electric motor scooter, electric motorcycle, uh, Segway, three-wheel cycle truck, electric unicycle, uh, anything with a battery and, and, and a couple wheels. This business is very international. Uh, the bike that's up on the screen is a Swiss brand. Uh, the motor technology comes from the United States. The um, uh, battery uh, cells come from Korea. The battery assembly is done in Taiwan. The bike itself is final assembled in Taiwan. The engineering inputs and design inputs come from Germany, Switzerland, and uh, Japan. This is the way our industry was born. We're not a, something that was a national industry like the automobile business was a, and bicycle business. They grew up in particular countries and then became international. We started off that way. LEVs are almost always transportation. They're not sport, they're not recreation, they're not hobbyists. You don't meet LEV enthusiasts. If you do meet an enthusiast, 
a little crazy. Uh, these are transportation, most places, most times. These are our favorite customers. And by the way, for these ladies, these are college-educated ladies who, they had electric bike, and I think they actually own three electric bikes, but they, that electric bike allows them to live farther away from work, which means that they can afford a nicer apartment, and they can get to work wearing, uh, they've got flats on, but they could get to work wearing high heels, and they get to work with their clothes clean and without being sweaty. They regard it as a significant enhancement in their life. Do they ride three to a bike? I'm sorry? Do they often ride three to a bike? Um, this, um, my son, who is an attractive young man, was taking, sitting on the sidewalk taking pictures, and I believe this was their third or fourth pass. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great picture, isn't it? Okay, they, this idea is not a new idea. Uh, I don't have a lot of details aside from this photograph, but I think it's a real photograph, and it's tied to a patent that was filed in 1909. Bikes like these, these are, by the way, these are your typical, or I should say generic Chinese electric bike. These are in a photo that was used to advertise in the United States. They're not quite right for America, but this is a very ordinary sort of vehicle. Um, this is what we see in the Euro European market of Pedelec. Okay, throttle controlled e-bike. You twist the throttle and it controls your speed. Pedelec, you control the speed by how hard or how fast you pedal. Now, when we were talking earlier about carbon efficiency, I decided I had to add this line to this. There's a German study, and if you send me an email, I'll send you a copy of the study. The German study shows that an electric bicycle, actually the user commuting to work on an electric bicycle is producing less carbon than if he rode a manual bicycle. Unless he eats potatoes, only potatoes, and nothing else. <laughs> the moment he takes a bite of hamburger, poop, he's over the top. Is it poop intentional? <laughs> the, um, We've got a lot of variety and creativity in this space. This is a concept vehicle shown by Honda. Uh, this is a, a oxygen, a fairly early oxygen that has been kind of uh, uh, cobbled together to make a delivery vehicle. Uh, by the way, food delivery, uh, one of the most common uses for an electric bicycle in the United States is delivering food, usually Chinese restaurant takeout. Uh, and if you have been recently been to Manhattan, you probably saw a few of these guys. You certainly can read about them. I think Bill could send you some articles about the menace on the sidewalk. Yeah. Yes, there's a box full of pizzas going 18 miles an hour on your sidewalk. Um, a light electric, uh, electric motor allows us to do interesting things. This bike would not be very comfortable to pedal as a bicycle, but it can look cool and be comfortable to ride and totally practical as a retro look because it's got an electric motor. This was a product in Berlin. Um, and then we have... Um, uh, what would we call that? Kind of a home job? Home job. <laughs> Electric mini scooters, uh, again, this is more of a toy, but usually a toy only in the United States. Uh, the vehicle on the right side of the screen is a toy. The vehicle on the left side of the cre screen is used for uh, people who want to travel up and down the soys uh, or the small side streets of Thailand without being really sweaty. By the way, you step outside your door in Thailand, you get sweaty. If you're a nicely dressed lady in your nice silk suit with your high heels, you don't want to walk to the end of the soy to catch a taxi. So this kind of a vehicle, actually, I think they sell something like 16000 a month uh, of these soy cruisers. Uh, this, is a, uh, uh, this is actually an electric bicycle, but it has performance similar to an electric scooter. This company is about to introduce a, a, the same vehicle without pedals as a light electric scooter, or, or also called a MOFA in Europe. The Segway is a light electric vehicle. Uh, postal bikes, uh, an awful lot of the world's mail moves by uh, human power. One of the things that's happening, and particularly in Europe, one of the things that's happening in Europe is the postman's getting old, and the postman has very substantial social benefits attached to his retirement. Uh, by the way, he's old, but he's only 40-something or maybe 50-something. He'd like to keep working. The electric power uh, postal bikes of Germany, France, Italy, Spain, allow that postal worker to keep working. And in some places we're seeing human electric uh, hybrid taxis. This one is in, uh, this one is normally in downtown Berlin. I think it was on the show that day. I'm fascinated by these. Mm -hmm. There's about four of these now that claim to be on the verge of production. What is it? It is a self-balancing, electric-powered, mono-wheel. And it works. These things, this one may be a pretty, pretty picture. 
but I've seen these, everything from bare bones prototypes to nicely done ones, they work. George Jetson and it is just around the corner. And here's what's happened, here's what happens when you use one for five to five or six or seven years. <laughs> Where's the family? I think that might have been from the from the wear and tear, that might have only been two people. This is very likely the shape of future electric bikes. Uh, most of what a, an electric two-wheeler overcomes is wind resistance. And when we streamline them, uh, a little bit of energy goes, uh, achieves a great deal of speed. And a lot of big speed and range.